So today's the start of season one for Modern Warfare and coming along with it, of course, is a bunch of different content, the battle pass and all things considered that you can jump into and that we've been detailing here on the channel the last couple of days. But along with that came some other stuff, some back end technical fixes, some actual weapon tuning, some challenge fixes and so on and so forth that along with this update, there's a lot to break down and a lot to discuss. You may not necessarily notice at first glance with this update. So today, as always with our updates, I want to break down everything this update it really changed here for you guys and let you know everything you need to so that you can jump in, hit the ground running, and jump in game with all information needed. So as we go along, let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Are you guys liking anything in particular out of this update? Anything in particular you're looking forward to? Whatever it is, let me know in the comments down below. And of course, if you are new to the channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button so you don't miss a single thing regarding all things modern warfare on a daily basis. And finally, thanks so much for the continued support on the channel. And of course, the overwhelming support on the season one content here the past couple of days. Seriously mind blowing. And I can't thank you guys enough. So now that season one is finally here, it starts all with firstly a download. Update 1.10 went live earlier today around 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time for all platforms. PS4 I know is a little bit delayed compared to the other ones, but for me on PlayStation 4, it was 15.6 gigabytes. I heard it was around 18 or so on Xbox, but don't quote me specifically on that one. I don't have the game for the platform to verify, but it was still pretty substantial of an update. And to my knowledge, in terms of data wise, the largest we've actually had for Modern Warfare to date. Whenever you download this, whenever you end up installing it, copying on PlayStation 4, whatever it may be, you'll notice that there's a new first leak game icon when you jump in. When you do that, you end up seeing a brand new idle screen also for the press start to enter menu. And after you get to that, after you enter in, you'll be met with the first substantial piece here of information. That being the fact that you have a rank reset if you are in your officer ranks. If you're still a part of your enlisted ranks, ranks 1 through 55, then this doesn't affect you. But if you were rank 56 to 150, your rank will have reset, to which you're presented with the Season 1 Player Rank Reset prompt. It lets you know that once again, you're Master Chief 1 if you finished again those enlisted ranks. And additionally, if you did reach this, you will also see the prompt after that that you get another free blueprint, similar to the Model 680 Hush variant that you got for completing the enlisted ranks, but this time it should be the M91 LMG Legendary variant. Though, upon actually recording this, a disclaimer, I don't have it in my inventory or armory, so it's possible that it's bugged, but I'd imagine it's fixed out relatively soon. Talking rank-wise though, the only other unfortunate thing is that everything rank-wise really did just come down to emblems, not an in-game rank icon like the theoretical prestige system or an air quote prestige icon like we theorized about and maybe thought that may have been the case. I personally think it's a missed opportunity, but alas, you'll end up finding your officer rank emblems in the actual emblems category for your calling card. After you clear those prompts, you'll end up seeing that there is a new main menu with an additional tile, one including the new fourth and presumably final tile of store, but we'll get to that in a second. Another large portion here before I jump into, say, gameplay and things related to that are the new features added in, most notably that of the battle pass with season one. Now, this is the new progression system we've talked about, and we put up a full video detailing as of yesterday. Don't want to go too much in depth in terms of talking about things and repeating it all that much, but this offers 20 or so tiers of free content throughout the 100, but if you end up opting into the 1000 COD point or $10 version of the premium battle pass, you end up getting access to all 100 items, and if you end up getting the battle pass bundle for 2400 COD points or $20, that is something that will start you out at tier 20, plus give you access to all of those things as well. To my knowledge, it is something that is retroactive, so if you end up say ranking up just going through free and getting the tier 24 and you're like you know what i kind of want to get the premium and get everything you'll end up getting a 24 and beforehand for all those paid premium ones as well now the timer for this is currently set at 61 days and a few hours in change so that's something that you'll have plenty of time to work through that 100 tier aspect it's tied to xp so complete your trials complete your mission challenges complete your officer rank challenges and so on and so forth as well as just simply playing the game and you'll be able to rank it up hopefully in no time but that said among the 100 items you'll be able to try and earn it will last you two months so try it out and get to rank 100. Additionally, another part that we just detailed earlier today is that of the shop that is introduced. Again, just to be thorough, this includes the tabs of Featured, Operators and Identity, Blueprints, and Franchise Store. Now, Featured is something that refreshes weekly, which currently features the Huntsman, Viking Burial 2, Blue Steel, the Reaper, and the Unseen Bundles. And then for the Operators and Identity, as well as Blueprints sections, these are fresh daily. So if you're like me and you like weapon camos, and you're curious maybe if you want to get something, if you don't see something you like right now, don't worry because it's going to change as of tomorrow and the next day and the next day 
My mind just immediately jumped to that SpongeBob sequence of Mr. Krabs and the next day, and the next day, and the next day. But jokes aside, those refresh daily, and currently we end up seeing the operators and identity have the Night Stalker, Heavy Hitter, Cloak and Dagger, Lone Marauder, and the Texan bundles, as well as then the blueprints have the Fireclaw, the Battle Hardened, the Lone Star, the Gambler, and the FNG bundles, each coming again at their own various price points, each with various different items attached with it, but those are there and introduced with this update, and the franchise store is just where you'd end up getting COD points in application, and then also if again there is something like a new Call of Duty endowment pack, or if you can pre-order in a couple of months the next Call of Duty title, that stuff will be in there. But outside of that, outside of the shop, outside of the battle pass, stuff we've mentioned on the channel before, we have a look at our brand new mission challenges as well. Now, these introduce things like mission challenges with the battle pass with certain levels for different operator uniforms, those including at the ranks of 30, 40, 50, and so on in increments of 10. Plus, there are additional new ones that are just unlocked naturally for all, such as the one that I really want to do, which is the Jack Frosty rifle blueprint. This to me looks like it has a nice clean shine to it of either a white or a metallic finish with the matte black accents and just a little touch of blue. So I'm all for that one. I'm going to be grinding that one out, but there's also a couple others listed there as well. Now, the nice part is that the current mission challenges aren't something that replaced what they're dubbing the season zero challenges. Those don't go away. Instead, these season one challenges are just added on. So by the end of the year, you'll have plenty of challenges and plenty of cosmetics to go for, which again, I'm all for. I'm all for a laundry list of cosmetic items that you can just grind out. Outside of that, in terms of officer ranks, again, we now see that there are showcases for the season zero or the preseason season ones that we just completed, or maybe didn't complete if you're like me, I didn't get all the way done with all of those, but you have a tab now for that in your officer ranks for season zero, but it also introduces now 100 new challenges for season one. You'll end up unlocking these just like you did in the preseason or season zero, in which each rank unlocks a new one, you get the opportunity to complete that for extra XP for every single challenge, and then for every 10 ribbons you complete, you get an emblem, and up until, well, you've reached that full completionist one, and so which it seems like at next season you'll end up just getting those in your emblem category as well. So now that we know the outcome of this, I don't know if I'm really die hard and dead set on doing these. If it's only going to be an emblem for part of your calling card or next to your calling card rather, I was hoping that would be definitely something still part of your actual rank icon, but again, it is not. Outside of that, though, we end up seeing gameplay-wise that reinforces introduced, as is Crash 24-7. Both of these playlists are live right now, so you can jump on, take advantage of that. Like I said in the last couple of videos, reinforce is fantastic for XP, I think, and it's honestly a lot of fun. It's a cool little change of pace, given it's a hybrid of domination, search and destroy, and cyber attack. So try that out, Crash. Played a little bit of it in uh, standard modes like we see in 24-7, and unfortunately my prediction was right. It plays way differently than that of the capture event that myself and other YouTubers were at because it's a camp fest. Hopefully you don't get too bad of lobbies, but you're going to run into that chance probably that you will. Outside of that, though, we end up seeing that there were some other additional playlist changes as well, to which Ramaza and Gunrunner are now part of the 10v10 modes, that being TDM20 and Dom20, which I haven't played Ramaza yet really in the 10v10, and probably likely won't since I'm not a huge fan of the map in particular, but Gunrunner is actually a really nice fit, I think, for 10v10. It played well on 6v6 if you were able to accurately track players and predict the flow well, but sometimes there were those moments where you just could not find anybody. That's not the case with this 10v10 adjustment. It plays well, it seems like you're always close to the action, and it's something that I had a lot of fun with. It's still available in 6v6, so if you're not a fan of it in 10v10, don't worry. You can take that off your quick play selection, and you don't have to queue for 10v10 matches but it is something that is there. Now, outside of that, additionally, we saw that night maps were added to Hardcore TDM, Search and Destroy, as well as Cyber Attack, and they're included from the get-go and Reinforce. The final thing, playlist-wise, is that Gun Game was removed. It's still in private matches, though, as was Shoot House 24-7 and 2v2 Gunfight Tournament. But that's a lot of the visual adjustments and gameplay related on a top-down level, which, actually, fun fact, it's not the only visual change left. They actually changed the gun bench, which is such a trivial change in my mind, but it stood out to me, and I 
feel like I'd be doing a disservice if I didn't say everything that changed. But additionally, some other smaller and visual changes. Firstly, visual coming down to the fact that you now see in game when you complete a camo challenge or showcase that that camo is unlocked right on your screen as you get it. And then to my knowledge, I believe it's a change, but in custom games now, when you go and set this up, you can actually use your custom blueprints and all blueprints that you have for all weapons. Whereas previously you couldn't, if I'm not mistaken. As for the more technical things, that's where we can get into the actual update notes from Infinity Ward for more precise info and adjustments. Now, there was some tuning in the way of the Riot Shield as well as the 357. The Riot Shield ended up having some tuning to how the Riot Shield protects against grenades when thrown at the player's feet and also reduced explosive damage within certain ranges due to that shield. Then the 357 had an adjustment to the Snake Shot or the Buckshot rounds in which it reduced the damage range, it reduced the effective hip fire damage, and it tuned the spread adjustments from the barrel attachments. So an overall nerf to the snake shot attachment on the 357, which personally, I think it's pretty good. That thing turned into a mini 725 and seems like it was the only thing I was running into as of recently. But that said, outside of that, we saw that killstreaks had some adjustments as well, in which it improved the effectiveness of FMJ on killstreaks, and it fixed the cluster strike dealing damage inconsistently when targeting a VTOL jet. Now, one that you and I may not see every so often, but you might come across on a stream or something like that, is that they actually added in a new end screen animation for whenever a nuke is called in. Whenever you see that, it still has your standard tactical nuke countdown timer, but it ends up adding a new sequence outside of that after it goes off, after it hits that black screen. And it's a sort of top-down perspective of a nuke in the mushroom cloud. And personally, I think it looks pretty cool. Is it necessarily something I was expecting or needed? Not really, but hey man, it's kind of cool, I guess. We saw various changes to a ton of different missions as well as challenges, such as close and personal, perks the job, bloodthirsty killer, various officer challenges tracking, I'm assuming for this upcoming season, I don't know why they'd be adjusting stuff in the past, but that stuff was fixed out here. But also other cool things are that the camo challenges now for the launchers as well as the 357 should be working properly. It ends up allowing players not only to get out of that sort of bugged state that the RPG and such were in, but it also now allows for ground kill streaks, such as tanks and other vehicles, to be a part of that criteria for unlocking camos, and the 357 camo challenge that was bugged should now be fixed out. So that is something that you may be seeing a huge bit of Damascus camo in your subscription feeds on Reddit, Twitter, wherever you may look for Call of Duty content, because players now finally be able to. A lot of people have been stuck at that for quite some time, but just haven't been able to complete it because the game just didn't let you. Additionally, to round out all of these changes, there were a ton of different fixes for spec ops, for keyboard and mouse support, for Codcaster, for PC, the shader issue that would come up every single time you opened a new menu. That kind of stuff has been fixed out and is taken care of, and you'll see that all on screen right now for you guys. So that is kind of where we're at here with it. It's everything that changed with this update. Is it something that for 15 to 18 gigabytes worth of data, I expected a little more? Maybe. I kind of thought that it would be a little bit longer of patch notes, but it is substantial changes, no less. Plus, a lot of this was actual content updates, so that in and of itself is going to take up a lot of data space. But that said, that's everything that changed here with this update, update 1.10 and Season 1 in Modern Warfare. So, let me know your thoughts down there in the comment section down below. Is there anything in particular you guys are really looking forward to here out of this update? Something you were hoping was going to get fixed, but didn't necessarily? Whatever it is, feel free to let me know your thoughts. But hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you drop a like down below, and of course, if you are new to the channel, Make sure you guys subscribe so you don't miss a single thing regarding all things modern warfare, updates, news, information, tips, tricks, all that good stuff we got you covered here on the channel. So hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a single bit of it. Again, thank you so much for the continued support on all of the season one content we put here up on the channel. Truly do appreciate it, and I'm glad you guys enjoyed it thus far. Looking forward to seeing what else we can do in season one here. But to stay up to date a little further, follow me over on Twitter and Instagram. Those are the best places to get connected with us out of YouTube. Practically live on both those. If you guys want to strike up conversation, ask me a question, wherever it may be, that link is down there in the description below. That said, thanks so much for watching. Mine is Espresso. I'll see you guys later. Take care and peace.